What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Joe's Tech. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, when the Ryzen 5 launch happened about a year ago, uh, I did a budget build for you guys and it seemed to be a pretty big hit. I still get like probably the most comments on that video out of any of my other videos. So I wanted to kind of do another one of those. Um, you know, recently there was the launch of the new APUs from AMD. So I picked one of these guys up and I still haven't even opened it or tested it out. So I'm pretty excited to do this project. Um, I've been kind of stockpiling all these parts for the last couple of months um, in preparation basically to do this build. So I figured what we could do today is I'll give you guys a quick rundown of all the parts that I'm going to be using and how I kind of picked them. And then uh, I'm going to put the computer together and then I'll probably just do like a quick time lapse at the end and some b-roll shots for you guys and then I'll be doing some testing over the next few days and I'll give you guys an update on what the performance was like with this PC. In order to pick all these parts I had a few things I wanted to figure out. First off I obviously wanted to use the APUs. I don't want to use a regular processor and the reason I'm going this route is because obviously graphics card prices are insane right now. I know a lot of people want to build PCs and you know that's kind of one of the drawbacks right now is you're pretty much gonna spend as much on your GPU as you could potentially spend on the rest of the computer. So uh, we're going to be doing that. We're not going to be including a dedicated graphics card at this point. Um, the motherboard that I decided to go with is the AB350M HD3. You guys saw this one in the last budget build. And the only reason I'm going with this board is because I've been using it probably for the last year and it still seems to be pretty bulletproof. No issues so far and it's still one of the most fairly priced um, micro ATX boards that you can get. So we're going to stick with this. I did not update the BIOS on this, so we're going to kind of take a gamble and see what happens when we put this CPU in there. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. If I have to pull the CPU out and, you know, update the BIOS and all that, I will, but I kind of want to do it this way because I know some of you guys might have that question, um, if you decide to go this route as well. So we have our CPU, we have our motherboard. Uh, for memory, I'm just gonna be using a single module of Corsair's Vengeance. Um, this is gonna be the 3000 megahertz variant. I might recommend and link in a lower frequency RAM because I'm not sure if you can buy an individual stick, eight gig stick of the uh, Vengeance LPX. You can buy two packs of four gigs, um, but you, I don't know if you could buy a single eight. So either way, I'll link up something similar or, to this uh, down in the description below because I'll have a parts list down there for you guys. The reason I only went with one eight gig stick there is obviously because uh, you may want to upgrade to a second module later. And you know, that's probably where I would recommend going toward is 16 gigs, even if it's just for gaming. Um, you know, down the road, you might want to be able to do a little bit more and you want to, you know, have some longevity in the PC that you build. So. I would probably recommend doing a single eight gig stick versus two four gig sticks. For storage, we're gonna be going with a one terabyte 7200 RPM Western Digital Drive. I ordered that a couple months ago as well. And for power supply, I'm gonna be sticking with the trusty old CX550M. I know a lot of people aren't really, for some reason, a fan of this power supply, but again, this is another power supply that I've used like probably 20 times now in test builds and just setting it on top of a desk to do like a test bench and it seems to work fine. I haven't had any issues. So, and again, that's another budget friendly power supply. So we're going to be sticking with that. Obviously the whole point of this build is going to be to keep the budget low. I pretty much have this figured down to about 500 bucks. So if you think about it, $500 for a complete PC. And if for some reason you guys decided down the road, you wanted to get a graphics card, you can still do that and you're still not breaking the bank and you still have a pretty decent PC. For the case, which is the last part, we're going to be going with the 301 from Inwin. This is not the C model, this is the original 301. If you guys don't know what the difference is, there's a 301 and a 301C. Main differentiator being the C means it has USB type C connectors on the front of the case. Uh, and this does not have that. So again, I went for budget. This case is only 50 bucks and it's a really nice looking tempered glass panel case. Um, so you guys will see that when we start putting everything together. So I'm pretty sure that's everything that we have uh, to put into the build. So why don't we go ahead and get started and uh, we'll see what this thing turns out looking like.
I'm